Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a new topic that is problem number 4 which is based on solution of differential equation using inverse z transform. Now we will study question first. So let's see the question number 4. A differential equation of a system is described by this differential equation that is 2y of n plus 3y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 2 and on right hand side what is mentioned u of n plus u of n minus 1 minus of u of n minus 2 and here the y of the initial conditions are also given y of n minus 1 it which is 2 and y of minus 2 is minus 1 and what we are going to calculate 0 inputs response 0 state response and total response of the system now first of all what do you mean by zero input response what do you mean by zero state response and the last one is total response so total response is the addition of zir and zsr zir means zero input response and second term zsr that is zero state response the total response is addition of zir and zsr but what is zir ZIR means the output of system is obtained only because of initial energy of system not because of applied input and the second one is zero state response the zero state response is the output response of the system is obtained only when input is applied in that initial conditions are assumed to be zero so we are going to calculate two different response and then we will add both of them to get the total response of the system but first of all look at here what is the difference here the initial conditions are given which means here we are going to apply one sided time shifting property of z transform so first of all we will study the different formulas that is advanced formula and delay formula of one sided time shifting property of z transform so these are two formulas the first one is for time delay and another one is for time advance and both these formulas are derived in basically in properties a one-sided time shifting property of set transform now look at here if the function is delayed by value of k then in one-sided z transform this time shifting property answer is z to the power minus k whole multiplied with inside this bracket x of z plus summation value where the n value varies from 1 to k 1 to k means the initial value that i'm going to substitute which is 1 and the k value means this delayed value which is going to be substituted over here and x of minus n into z to the power plus n and the time advance formula is z transform of x of n plus k that is here the function is advanced so if the function is advanced then we will multiply this whole summation value or whole bracket by z to the power plus k and inside this bracket what we are going to do z transform of that input that is x of z and minus summation n value varies from 0 to k minus 1 x of n z to the power minus n now we are going to use this time delay formula in our question because in my question all the functions y of n as well as step response are delayed now we will use this formula in our solution so my question is this 2y of n plus 3y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 2 equal to u of n plus u of n minus 1 minus u of n minus 2 and here the two constant values are given y of minus 1 is 2 and y of minus 2 is minus 1 now as i said here all the functions are delayed so we will use a time delay property of one sided z transform now here in this first part my k value is 1 and in second part my k value is 2 similarly on right hand side my k value is 1 in first part and second k value is minus 2 or you can say simply 2 now we will use this formula or we can going to substitute this formula by applying z transform on both the sides so first of all i'm going to write apply z transform and then we'll substitute this formula over here So what you will get z transform of y of n is simple that is y of z because 2 is a constant so i am going to write 2 outside then we can apply z transform on it now here 
the 3 is a constant. Now we will use this formula over here. Here we have x of n but here we have a y of n. So please be careful while writing this or while comparing this formula. Now, so first of all this function is delayed by 1. So this k value is replaced by 1. So I'm going to write z to the power minus 1. And this minus 1 is multiplied with first of all z transform of y of z. z transform of y of n which is y of z plus this summation. Basically our summation value varies from 1 to k and here my k value is 1. So here we can use only n is equals to 1 or if we do not write the summation value then also it is fine. But we have already written summation so no need to worry. Then y of minus 1 into z raise to n. Now we will use the same formula over here also. So here the no constant is there so we will directly write here the function is delayed by 2 so we will write z to the power minus 2 first then y of n z transform is y of z now next plus now here the k value is 2 so we can write summation value varies from 1 to 2 and then x of n minus n z raise to n so we can write y of this now next one is u of n plus u of n minus 1 plus u of n minus 2 so here also we will write or we will use the same formula now we will apply z transform on right hand side so first of all we have u of n so we can write a z transform of u of n is u of z now next one here the function is delayed by minus 1 so I am going to write z to the power minus 1 first and then this formula so x of z will write u of z first and then here the value of delay is 1 so we will directly use this one value over here We are going to write u of minus 1 into z to the power 1 and then minus. Again we will use the same formula over here. So this is nothing but z to the power minus 2 because this function is delayed by 2 or we can say minus 2 and then the rest of the formula that is inside this bracket we will write u of z plus Your k value is 2 so that's why I have written 1 to 2 and then now we will substitute or you can say first of all we will break all this summation value one by one now I will break this summation so we will substitute n value from 1 to 2 over here also as well as over here also now look at here I will multiply 3z inverse inside this bracket so the first term is now next one z to the power minus 1 and z to the power plus 1 the bases are same so powers always get added so 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so z to the power we have 0 so it is 1 so we will write only 3 into y of minus 1 next z to the power minus 2 will be multiplied with y of z Next, if I break this summation, then I will substitute first of all 1 inside this bracket. So, if I substitute 1 over here, so we will write y of minus 1 into z to the power 1 and that will be multiplied z to the power minus 2. Next, we will add a 2 value over here. But this whole term is multiplied with once again z to the power minus 2. Now look at on right hand side the first term is u of z now multiply z inverse inside this bracket so again z inverse into u of z is the first term whereas the second one is u of minus 1 into z to the power minus 1 into z again if the bases are same powers always get added so 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so z to the power 0 we have 1 so we will write only z to the power minus 1 
then I'll multiply z to the power minus 2 over here. The first one is z to the power minus 2 into u of z and then I'll substitute n value from 1 to 2 in this part. Look at here, here we have minus sign. So all the terms we are, that we are going to write will carry the same negative sign. So I have substituted n equals to 1 over here and then now look at here we will try to equate y of z from left hand side as well as we will substitute all the constant value in my question. So 3z inverse into y of z then 2y of z next the initial condition value is already given in my question so minus one value is given which is a 2 so here we'll write a 2 next z to the power minus 2 y of z then again here we have y of minus 1 so we will write again 2 z to the power plus 1 and z to the power minus 2 we will write z to the power minus 1 next one now y of minus 2 this initial condition value is also given in my question which is minus 1 and here the bases are same so powers always get added so 2 of minus 2 answer is 0 z to the power 0 is always 1 so we will write only minus 1 over here now we will move on to right hand side the first one is u of z next one is z inverse into u of z but look at here here we have u of minus 1 as well as u of minus 1 and minus 2 now we know that u of n is always available for causal time and here we have got a non-causal time sequence that is here we have u of minus 1 that is here n value is minus 1 here we have n value is minus 2 and we know that for non-causal period or non-causal time sequence my u of n is always having value 0 so the this term all this term will be multiplied or will be replaced by 0 so you are going to write only this value which is u of z I'll repeat my n u of n is always available for causal sequence and for non-causal sequence the amplitude is always 0 that's why I'm not going to write these three values now I'll take y of z common from left hand side and u of z common from right hand side so I'll write these two first then 3z inverse next one over here which is z to the power minus 2 and the rest of the terms are the because of initial condition so 3 to the 6 next one is a 2z inverse and the last one is plus or minus one is minus one and on right hand side you can write u of z common so what else is remaining inside this bracket one so this is what we have got on right hand side now just do one thing what we want basically we want a zero state response and zero input response two response we want now this output we have got just because of input supply or input is applied u of z is nothing but my input and when we apply my input in my on my system you will get some effect of input over there and these three values are produced due to the initial condition of system or the initial energy of system so whatever response you will get just because of this initial condition is nothing but zir that is zero input response and the output response produced by just applying input and by assuming input initial conditions are zero then whatever output response you are going to calculate it is nothing but the zsr and if we add both these values then you will get the total response of the system so first of all what i'm going to do i'm going to shift this value on right hand side and then here also i'm going to substitute my z u of z value which is z upon z minus 1 
So after shifting all this value, we have got y of z equals to u of z into 1 plus z inverse minus z to the power minus 2 divided by z 2 plus 3z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 and minus because after shifting that whole initial condition on right hand side, they will carry some minus sign and 6 minus 1 is 5 and 2z inverse is there and in denominator we have the same term. Now, as I said, if the output is produced due to initial condition, that output is considered as zero input response. So I can say that I'm going to replace this whole equation by y2 of n which will give us a zero input response and this whole output response is obtained because of input. So I'm going to consider this as my y1 of n and this will give us zero state response. So I can say that my y of z is a combination of y1 of n and y2 of n whereas my y1 of n is my y1 of z is this whole term and my y2 of z is this next one. So I'll mark this one is my equation number one. Now we will solve both these parts separately to get this ZSR and ZIR respectively. So my Y of N is this. Now I'll substitute my U of Z value which is z upon z minus 1 and that is multiplied with this whole one. Now look at here, this z upon z minus 1 is having positive orders whereas this whole term is having a negative order. So you can convert this whole equation into a negative order of z or else you can convert this whole product term into positive order of z. So it depends on you. So I'll multiply both this side that is numerator and denominator by z square so that all the terms or all the powers of z becomes positive. So after multiplying z square on numerator as well as on denominator, what we will get? This will be nothing but our result. Now we will move on to inverse but before moving to inverse we will use a partial factor method to find out the y of n. So first of all we will factorize these two this denominator and I'll shift this z on left hand side. So my factors are z plus 1 and z plus half. Now in partial fraction once we get the factorized value then we will use a number of constant term which depends on the number of factors. Here we have a three factors so we will use three different constants. So let's say a, b, c are my constants value. So in denominator of a, we'll write z minus one. And the last one is c upon z plus half. And let's say this is nothing but my equation number two. I'll multiply this denominator, a left hand side denominator on right hand side. So what will get? And this is my equation number three. Now we'll substitute different values of z to get the constants values of a, b, and c. So this was our equation number three. Now we are going to substitute z values so that you will get the answer of our all the constants a, b, c. So first one, I'll substitute z equals to one in my equation number three. So what we'll get? This z square is replaced by one. So one square is nothing but one. Again here we have one because z is replaced by one, but one minus one becomes zero. So we have only one on left hand side. Look at here on right hand side. 
this z is replaced by 1 so 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so whole product term is replaced by 0 similarly on br side this z is replaced by 1 so 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so whole b term or b product term is also replaced by 0 so you will get the answer only for a now this z is replaced by 1 so we can write 1 plus 1 is 2 and this one this z is replaced by 1 so 1 plus 1 by 2 is 3 by 2 now 2 to get cancelled so, and if I shift these 3 on left hand side you will get the answer of A which is 1 by 3. Now similarly we will substitute Z equals to minus 1. So if I substitute Z equals to minus 1 then what you can get? Minus 1 square is 1 but this Z is replaced by minus 1 so we will write minus 1 minus 1 and these two 1 get cancelled so we have only minus 1 on left hand side. Now look at here this z is replaced by minus 1 so minus 1 plus 1 becomes 0 so whole a term will get vanished. Similarly in the last term this z is replaced by minus 1 so minus 1 plus 1 becomes 0 so whole c term will also get vanished so we will get the answer only of b. Now this z is replaced by minus 1 so minus 1 minus 1 will give us a minus 2. Here this z is replaced by minus 1 so minus 1 plus half is nothing but minus half. Here this 2 to gets cancelled. So minus 1 into minus 1 is plus 1. So my b value is minus 1. Now we will substitute z equals to minus half. Now here the z square we have. The minus half square is 1 by 4. This z is replaced by minus half. And the last one is minus 1. Look at here this z is replaced by minus half so minus half plus half becomes 0 here also minus half plus half becomes 0 so whole automatically this whole b product as well as a product is replaced by 0 so i'm not going to write this value because the value is 0 we'll move on to directly c this z is replaced by minus half now minus half minus 1 answer is minus 3 by 2 but minus half plus 1 answer is half only look at here on left hand side what you will get minus 5 by 4 now minus 3 by 2 into half is minus 3 by 4 and now if i shift this 3 minus 3 by 4 on left hand side what you will get minus 3 by 2 minus 3 by 4 is represented by minus 4 by 3 and which is multiplied with minus 5 by 4 this 4 4 8 gets cancelled minus minus also gets cancelled so my c value is minus 5 by 3 now i will substitute a b c value in my equation number Now multiply this z on right hand side. So I will write constant term first. So z upon z minus 1 will be there. Now if I take minus 1 constant or outside so plus into minus becomes minus and this z is multiplied with z plus 1 so you have got this value. Now again 5 by 3 I will write first because it is a constant term. So what you will get? Z upon Z plus half. Now we can apply inverse Z transform on both the sides. So inverse Z transform Y of Z is nothing but Y1 of N. Now one third is a constant and we know that Z upon Z minus 1 is nothing but U of N. Now this is minus sign. We can use the same formula over here also if I consider my a value is minus 1. So I can write minus 1 raised to n into u of n. Now in next part 5 by 3 is constant. So z, z upon z plus half. If I consider my a value is minus half. So I can write minus half raised to n u of n. And here if I take u of n common. 
we can write this answer as 1 by 3 minus of minus 1 raised to n plus and this is nothing but the zero state response that is z s r now we will calculate the zero input response that is y2 of n let's say this is nothing but my equation number four now this was my y2 of z which is 2z inverse plus 5 upon 2 plus z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 now this function is already is in negative power of z so we will solve this numerical as it is so what are the factors of this function we have already calculated the factors and the factors are 1 and half so i can write 1 plus z inverse And another is 1 plus half of z inverse now here we have a uh, two factors so we will use uh, two different variables let's say a and b and this is nothing but my equation number 5 now we will multiply this left hand side denominator on right hand side so what you will get This is my equation number 6. Now substitute z inverse value in this equation number 6. So if I substitute z inverse equals to minus 2, then automatically these two two get cancelled and 1 into minus 1 is minus 1, 1 minus 1 becomes 0. So my a value will be removed, only you will get the value of b. Now look at it. Here we have a z inverse, so if this replaced by minus 2, so minus 2 into 2 is minus 4 and plus 5 will be on left hand side and on right hand side what you will get as I said a value will be replaced by 0 so we will get the answer only of b and 1 minus 2 answer is minus 1 and here we have 1 because 5 minus 4 is 1 and this one is a minus b so if I multiply both the sides by minus sign so you will get v is equals to minus 1 Now, we will substitute z equals to minus 1. So, z inverse equals to minus 1. I am going to substitute over here. So, minus 1 into 2 is minus 2, but which is added with the 5. Now, minus 1, z inverse is replaced by minus 1. So, plus 1, minus 1 becomes 0. So, whole b will be replaced by 0. I am not going to write that value because it is 0. I will substitute minus 1 over here. So plus half into minus 1 answer is minus half. Now 1 minus half is half and 5 minus 2 is 3. Now you can say that we will shift this half on left hand side or else multiply both the sides by 2. So you will get answer of A which is a 6. Now I will substitute my A and B value in my equation number. 5. Now I have substituted my a value and b value in my equation number 5. Now we will do one thing. We will multiply numerator and denominator by z with both these terms. So what you will get? I will write 6 as a constant which is written outside and z upon z plus 1 is the first term. Again minus 1 I will take common. So minus 1 is there and which is multiplied with z upon z plus half. Now we will apply inverse z transform on both the sides. So what you will get yu2 of z is represented by y2 of n. This 6 is constant and we have solved the inverse z transform of z upon z plus 1 as well as z upon z plus half and it is nothing but minus 1 raised to n into u of n minus 
well we have solved this part in zsr and y2 of n as we discussed earlier it is nothing but the zero input response now if you want then you can take u of n common and this is nothing but my final response of y2 of n that is zero input response and let's say this is nothing but my equation number seven now i will add equation number seven and equation number four in my equation number first Now, from equation number one, what we can say that y of n is nothing but y1 of n minus y2 of n. This is the zero state response and this one is the zero input response and after adding both these values, you will get the total response of the system. So, I have substituted my y1 of n value and y2 of n value in this equation. Now, from both the sides, we have u of n. So, you can take u of n common. Now, these two brackets get added. So, first of all, I will write this one, 1 by 3. now and the next one this minus sign will be multiplied inside this bracket so what you can say minus 6 into minus 1 raised to n this minus minus become plus so we can write now my y of n is nothing but here the 1 by 3 is a constant so we'll write 1 by 3 as it is now minus of minus 1 raised to n here we have and here it is a minus of 6 minus 1 raised to n so minus 1 and minus 6 become minus 7 and minus 1 raised to n will be written as it is now 5 by 3 plus 1 is nothing but 8 by 3 and minus half raised to n this is my output response or you can say a total response of the system and this is our final solution so similar type of questions will be asked in exams so while applying formula please be careful which formula you are going to prefer for advance and for delay the formulas are different now we will solve a similar type of numerical in next videos so thank you for watching this video stay tuned to ikeda and subscribe to ikeda thank you so much